Hey fools, Big T here, and we're going to talk about Nintendo's E3 2017, which will be amazing. I'm calling it now, I'm calling it right here. Unlike previous kind of Nintendo events uh, in the past, basically during the Wii U era, I and most Nintendo fans haven't allowed ourselves to get overly excited, too excited before the show, but this time, fuck that, <laughs> I'm getting excited, I'm letting my excitement take over me and i'm cool with that it's time nintendo obviously has a great new console out there that's selling gangbusters everybody loves it and uh it's time to you know let my imagination run wild now the video is titled you know it will be great and i'm saying that because i do believe that it will be great and a lot of the stuff i'm going to talk about in here is you know mostly speculation so it's kind of like you know most people's predictions video if you want to call it that i'm going to have some fun but I'm not going to be like saying stuff that I've seen other videos where it's just like off the wall. Um, maybe one or two things I talk about is going to be off the wall. But for the most part, I'm going to try to stay in reality with my uh, quote unquote predictions here. So the first one is Smash 4 Switch. That's Super Smash Brothers Deluxe or Super Smash Brothers for Switch or whatever they're going to call it. Uh, we're going to hear something about it. I don't think they're going to spend too much time on it. Basically because we have so much... Uh, so many fighting games already uh, announced for Switch uh, with Pokken recently being announced. And you have uh, obviously ARMS coming up here to throw another fighting game in the mix. Tournament style fighting game. Obviously they're having a tournament thing going on at uh, uh, this year's E3. Uh, that would be a little bit too much going on. So I think we'll get an announcement. We, you know, maybe a little bit of details, but it'll be quick. Um, next up. Virtual Console, GameCube, Virtual Console, Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, Virtual Console. I know that sounds crazy, but I don't think so. Uh, me, myself, I don't really care that much about Virtual Console. I, I, I kind of prefer playing those old games on the old hardware. I like the feel of the controllers and whatnot, but I'm saying there actually won't be a Virtual Console. <laughs> and what I mean by that is just look at the Neo Geo setup. Obviously, we got those Neo Geo games early on Switch. They sell really well. And I think that's because they're not off in their own little section called the Virtual Console. I think that's a big reason that the Neo Geo games are selling as well as they are. And I think Nintendo will continue that. I feel like they said something about uh, there won't be a traditional Virtual Console going forward or something along those lines previously. And I think this is what they mean. that They're, they're just going to put games out like all the other companies do. They don't put it off in a little section um, and call it a certain thing. I think they're just going to release games on the, you know, on the eShop. And that is, to me, that's the best way to do it. I mean, you, you can, you know, when you when you go to sell them, you can say uh, these are these types of systems games or this or this type of systems games. That's fine. But I think cording, you know, cording them off into a, a section called Virtual Console um, you know, in today's market isn't smart because everybody just puts the games out there. Uh, Sony does it. Microsoft does it. They just have the store and you buy all the go old games along with new games and retro games uh, and uh, indie games, I should say. And that it, to me, that's the best way to do it. That's another reason I don't think, you know, such and such virtual console or having Saturn games or Dreamcast games are that outlandish. Because like I said, the Neo Geo stuff is kind of new i don't remember there being neo maybe there were a few games neo geo on wii and wii u i don't remember them that well but i think just putting the game out there and letting it be its own thing is a better way to sell it and having gamecube games and just putting them out there and having saturn games because the, nobody else really has that many or they have a few but you don't have that many saturn games uh on Virtual Console uh, and Dreamcast as well, obviously. Um, and these will mostly be like the first party stuff. You'll get some third party, maybe Capcom will license some of their Saturn games and same for Dreamcast and the GameCube stuff uh, will be a lot of first party stuff initially. And I think that's good because that takes a lot of pressure off to just dump a bunch of games from a system on your virtual console. You can just put a game out there and it's not like, oh, this is the GameCube's library. It's just, this is a GameCube game, boom. You know, you put the game out there, tell what console it's from. I mean, you all guys have seen it. I don't have to explain that too much. So that's why I think 
uh, unique system, systems that it haven't gotten a lot of love, that didn't get a lot of love when they came out, is perfect for Switch's eShop and just putting out games, uh, retro styled games, you know, games from past consoles. And it won't be like a virtual console off to the side type of thing. It'll be just games. That's the best way to do it, I think. Next up, we got Retro's new IP. That's right. I believe Retro's new IP will be revealed in some fashion at uh, Nintendo's E3 uh, Spotlight event. And I think um, it is a new IP. I think it's a science fiction style, maybe more Western style, because obviously Retro is a Texas-based they're an American uh, software house. And if you remember Retro, when they first started, they had tons of ideas. They were working on a ton of games. They were working on the car combat game. They were working on their own football game. Uh, they had this one game. Oh, my God. What was the name of that game? Raven Blade. They were working on Raven Blade. So they were working on a bunch of games. And the only reason that those games got canceled is because they had to take priority on Metroid, uh, the new Metroid game, Metroid Prime which eventually became. And because there were so many, uh, I guess, development issues with that game, they all had to, they had to cancel all those other games and focus. Now, I'm glad because we got Metroid Prime and it was amazing. The, the entire series is just amazing. Uh, but Retro can do other types of games, and I think this will finally be their chance to fly. Uh, they didn't really get to do that on Wii because the Wii was kind of a different beast. And uh, again, they focused on uh, they focused on Metroid Prime, but also Donkey Kong Country Returns was a huge seller, and so they kind of got kind of pegged into making an, you know the Donkey Kong game after that uh, the Wii one sold so well. Obviously, the Wii, Wii, Wii U one didn't do as well, but that was mostly because of the install base, I believe, and uh, timing and whatnot. So I think Retro's new IP is coming out. Uh, we all know that uh, a Deus Ex composer uh was tapped to work on the i'm guessing the soundtrack obviously for the game and that that's what makes me think it's going to be like a noir type of um maybe action adventure rpg type of game uh western style i think that's what they're going to be working on and uh i'm very excited for that all right next up we got we just talked about retro but we, i'm dropping this 3D Donkey Kong game, and it won't be like you know the the collectathon that was Donkey Kong 64. It'll be more like a uh, kind of Mario, uh, kind of GameCube era styled uh, 3D platformer, mostly action style, and uh, and a lot of platforming, obviously. Um, and I think Retro could also be working on that, or maybe it'll be a different house, maybe Nintendo teamed up with a different studio or something to bring that out um but there's not a lot of studios that are known for that type of game so um i think it's it'll be in-house it'll be retro uh maybe with some partners and whatnot helping them out throughout nintendo's uh development studios and we're gonna get a new 3d donkey kong um we're gonna have donkey kong come back in a big way and i think you know, we'll see that at uh, near, uh, some in some capacity during their spotlight event. All right, next up we have, uh, this is kind of a weird phrasing I have for it, but a PC style, basically point and click adventure type of game. Um, I don't know who's going to make it, where is it coming from, but I think the Switch is just perfect for that type of game. I was really excited for the Wii U uh, when it was announced that um, the new Longest Journey game was coming. Uh, and obviously it got canceled for Wii U and never came out. It is on Steam right now. Um, I keep holding off because I'm hoping that it's going to show up on a console. I'm not sure if it's on Xbox One or not, but I know it's on Steam. Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I love those types of games. I think, like I said, I think the, the Switch is a very good console for that type, that style of game. Remember there was rumors about um, uh, L.A. Noir? coming out for switch there was a rumor about that and the more i thought about it the more i thought that would be really cool because um obviously there's a touch screen stuff you can do for detective work or whatever but if you're not in handheld mode the joy cons work a lot like um a lot like the wii remotes and you can do you know touch base point and click based stuff and i think that is cool i think 
something like that unique uh, coming to the Switch. Like I said, a PC style point and click adventure type of game coming to the Switch would be great. Um, and I'm hoping that we get that. Obviously, the Switch and the Joy Cons have all those cool features that would work really well for that type of game. And uh, hopefully, we'll see that utilized. Next up, we got Resident Evil 7. Um, long time ago, before I believe uh, the January event, maybe sometime right after that event, I called uh, Resident Evil 7 come into the Switch. Uh, I think it was during Juices Loose podcast talked about it. And uh, nobody really thought, agreed with me on that. And then a little bit later, we got some information that Capcom had worked with Nintendo specifically on the Switch and convinced them to put more RAM in going from two gigs to four gigs, I believe, for the Switch. And that, that Capcom was a big influence on that. And it's kind of strange because Capcom hasn't really done anything <laughs> on the Switch at this point other than Ultra Street Fighter 2, which is not like a big investment. So um, I think we'll finally get not only Resident Evil 7 information from Capcom, but more games. Obviously, we're getting Monster Hunter uh, Double Cross. That's coming. I'm pretty excited for that. And uh, I think we're going to get more games announced uh, for Capcom, from Capcom for the Switch. So stay tuned for that. And you know, there's been a lot of hoopla about Nintendo only having 25 minutes for the spotlight. And I'm going to say Nintendo's 25 minute spotlight will be stellar. And I'm looking at the April Direct basically as an implication of this spotlight. You're not going to get, you know, like the other companies where you have you know hour hour and a half where they announce something a guy comes out on stage starts playing it for a little bit fumbles off and then rinse and repeat <laughs> you know you're gonna get trailer after trailer and you know maybe it won't be full trailers maybe it'll just be like a quick gameplay snippet they haven't when they detailed what the spotlight was going to be about they didn't say anything about 3ds even so i think they're going to relegate most of the 3ds stuff to Treehouse, and this will be mainly Switch focused. So if you think about it, you know, I'm thinking two minutes, you know, a game, Odyssey will probably get the, maybe the biggest chunk. Uh, you know, you have, you'll have Xenoblade Chronicles 2 probably getting a decent chunk, uh, maybe a Splatoon. But after that, you know, you probably will have another 15 minutes to, you know, um, to, to put out other games, to talk about other games. The other games coming this year, but also a lot of the stuff I talked about uh, earlier here in this uh, video. So I don't think the 25 minute thing is gonna be that big a deal. If you think about how many games they ran through in that April Direct and, you know, I was left wanting, wanting more information, but I just wanna know what's coming. I think most people just wanna know what's coming. You can spend some time in the uh, treehouse if you have, that game there but if you don't you know at least i know these games are coming and stuff like the 3d donkey kong game uh if that is a real thing you know i'm just happy to know what's coming i don't need to see too much of it and you know that that will likely be coming out in 2018 you know stuff like that that i mentioned so don't 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 worry about the 25 minutes <laughs> it's not a big deal if you think about that april direct and my last thing um, is one mind-shattering legacy IP returning announcement. And I'm, I don't know what it's going to be. I feel like it's going to be something that the fans have been wanting for a long time. There's games that, you know, on the NES, Super Nintendo, that haven't been out in a while. We haven't seen uh, any, you know, we haven't seen in a while. And a lot of fans have been wanting. But I, I have a feeling. <laughs> Call me crazy. I have a feeling that it's going to be like an Earthbound thing. Maybe we'll get that Earthbound Mother 3 3D version because we haven't gotten an official Mother 3 over here. There's a there's the fan translation. There's the repro carts and stuff out there for the Game Boy Advance, I believe. And those look really cool. And I want one, but I'm holding off. Um, I'm only going to hold off uh, for this year. And then I'm going to give in. But I feel like um maybe that mother three we were going to get in the n64 way back when we're going to end up getting um the nintendo switch and it's going to be an announcement 
at this uh, year's E3. Now, if it's not that, it could be something else. Maybe uh, a return to Kid Icarus. Um, Luigi's Mansion isn't, you know, you know, out of sorts. We got an awesome one on the 3DS. It could be, you know, we get a new console, Luigi's Mansion. I think it'll be something that will be pretty impactful and fans have been wanting or uh, that will make fans really happy. And yeah, that was my last one. Oh, wait a minute. Come on. There's no way that's my last one. My last one officially is Metroid Next. Whatever it's going to be. I don't know if it's going to be a Prime. The Prime story was closed up. Tanabe hinted at wanting to do more stuff with the Hunters and Silux and whatnot. If you played uh, uh, Prime uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force, which most people didn't. <laughs> but like, I think it's going to be... There's going to be an announcement for Metroid. It may you may not see any footage. You may just get like, you know, a graphic or a description or just something to let the fans know what's coming. There's no reason to for Nintendo at this point to hold back to the fear. I know they they don't want to tell us stuff because they don't want to be questioned at every at every interview about something that they don't want to talk about, and uh, that's one reason they're secretive about stuff. Um, but I think you know the Switch is time to let let it fly let that stuff fly the fans are excited for this console and let them stay excited let them keep being excited all the way into next year knowing some of the things that are coming next year um but you know let 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 it happen <laughs> you know let you know we don't want to have gamer blue balls like we had with the wii u we want you know we want to be able to explode <laughs> with joy uh you know for our Nintendo games and on our new Nintendo console. So that's my E3 is going to be awesome for a Nintendo Switch video. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, right. I'm excited. Uh, maybe a third of what I'm talking about here is actually going to happen. That's fine. Um, I'm not telling you to get excited and expect this stuff and to get upset if it doesn't happen. It's okay to be excited. I'm excited this year. I'm letting my you know, my better, you know, my better uh, judgment get the best of me. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to be happy and excited for what's coming. Um, and I'm ready to, you know, after the Wii U, um, I love the Wii U, but there's a lot of games and stuff that I wanted to come to it that never happened. And I think the Switch is in position to get those games. And I'm very excited for that. So let's see what happens. All right, foos, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe if you haven't. That's it. I'm out. Oh, yeah. One more thing. Play Nintendo, fools. <laughs>